October 25th, evening, Hotel Hudson, Amsterdam. I'm really tired. We toured three art galleries this afternoon between 1 p.m. and 5 p.m., so I'm exhausted. One was all Van Gogh. But let me start at the beginning. While you enjoy your wine, I'll drink water from my sink beside my bed here. Our room is six feet by ten feet with a double bed, tiny table and a sink. A mirror in a window and one wall is slanted. Van Gogh had it good. Anyways, last Saturday, October 17th, we had a really good party at 932 Jesse back in Winnipeg. We got drunk and danced in the basement. We did our invisible air guitar imitation to the entire Woodstock version of 10 years after I'm going home, which was quite a hit. They passed the hat and we got almost $100, plus a Swiss Army knife and a bottle of champagne. All the old gang were there and all asked about you, of course. We got their addresses and promised everyone a postcard foolishly. It will mean a lot of tackiness, but I love it. So Sunday we recuperated lazed about all evening, delayed leaving Winnipeg one more day. Then Monday, things worked out real well. We got a drive-away half-ton truck with a canopy on the back for Mississauga and shared it with another guy going east, so our costs to get to Toronto were only gas, and that worked out to 30 bucks each. We drove straight through taking turns, and I drove into Toronto Tuesday night about 7 p.m. We dropped off the other guy at the YMCA downtown and strolled Young Street for a while before we got a hold of a friend at his place we stayed for the night. Wednesday, our flight scheduled for 10.30 p.m. So we tried to return the truck to these rentway people in Mississauga. Only got there about 3.30 p.m. after doing other errands, and they could only give us a check for our deposit. I had paid it all myself, $275 plus gas. And the banks were all closed. I was dumb not to have thought of it before, but I blamed them. However, the secretary told us if one of us waited in the office, I could take the truck to a certain trust company that was open until 5. I had to go back down the 401 into Toronto a long ways and barely got there on time. Of course they wouldn't cash it. No way. She'd said it would be no problem, but the tellers laughed at me and the manager just stood there unmoved at my story about leaving that night for Amsterdam and needing cash now, and he said, no, 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 I had to have an account there. In tears, I drove back to Rentway, and this took another half an hour in rush hour traffic. Rentway was dark except for two execs talking in an office at the end of the hall. Holding my check for $290 aloft, I marched in and demanded action. After they calmed me down and we talked it over, I asked them to give me whatever cash he could find in his pockets <laughs> and the $20 from Petty Cash Drawer, and then make me another check to send home. His offer was to phone back from Amsterdam and then they'd wire the money to me, but I didn't want to trust him. So... He said okay, and he went to look. After a while, he came back with a grin and $255 in cash, which he said he'd collected from all the mechanics working in the shop out back. That was pretty nice of him and them, and it all worked out okay. The remaining $35 that they owed me, I had to make out in a check. And while we waited for friends to come and pick us up for supper, and he went away, we were in the offices alone. I stole a pile of paper, some envelopes, and wrote a letter, which I mailed with the check. My friend called home from the secretary's desk. They'll never know. That night we went out for supper and beers with friends and reminisced. We drove us to the airport and we checked our backpacks and had an hour till takeoff. We had some joints that we smoked in the parking lot somewhat nervously, then got in line to go through the x-ray inspection. Shit, I was wearing the Swiss Army knife and had a bag of food with a knife in it. I thought I'd be in trouble, but after they finished checking me, they said I'm okay and let the bag through too. Easy. While waiting to board, I remembered too late that I wanted to buy some Canadian cigarettes with my last change. Oh well. We boarded a Ward Air DC-10. Exciting or what? But no movie and not enough alcohol to get even faintly half drunk. It was a short flight with a stopover in Prestwick, Scotland. We really loved the scenery coming in and taking off from there. Arrived in Amsterdam about noon and got through customs pretty easy. But tired, dazed and confused, we took a bus to the center of town and got off with our heavy packs to look for a room. We had made friends on the flight with an elderly Dutch lady who gave us $50 Canadian because she was coming home and didn't need it anymore. So we decided we could afford a hotel room. We changed it at the airport into a hundred Dutch guilders. 
we were lucky to find a room right away at the Hotel Sherman for 50 It was nice and cozy and had a private bath and toilet. We slept all afternoon and went out sightseeing that night. The streets were alive with people. The shops were open and it was wild. We walked a long ways until we got to Rembrandt's Plain and had some beers in an accordion bar. Fun! Walked back a different way, seeing the sights. You would love the buildings here to look at, paint, etc. All old, ornate, jammed together along narrow streets and canals. So much to look at. So many little shops and bars. For a city of 700,000, it sure is jammed together so that one can walk anywhere, even if completely across the city. A glass of Heineken costs one and a half Dutch guilders, about 75 cents. And the cheap bars, more if there's music. Friday morning we checked out because we figured we'd better find a cheaper place to stay. Decided our combined budget should be about 80 guilders a day. Wanted to find the red light district, thinking sleazy hotels there would be cheaper. Wandered around with our heavy backpacks on in the narrow streets, bumping into things and asking prices at each little hotel. They all speak English okay, and prices were all the same, unless we got into a hostel or a dorm. Finally decided to save money, we should try one. So for 15 guilders each, we took beds in a room with four others, six bunk beds. This included breakfast. Went up to see it and didn't like it at all. It stank. There were two people trying to sleep in there still at 1 p.m. and it was a mess. Also, we didn't feel our stuff would be at all safe in there as everyone shared one key. We were beginning to wish we'd brought a lot less and nothing too valuable. So we got out of there, actually, and took another room by ourselves in a small hotel. The one we're still in tonight will be our third night here, and it's not a bad deal. It comes with breakfast, too. Anyways, Friday night we went to a great little bar, the last waterhole. A slice of Texas in Amsterdam, really. They even offer Mexican beers, the sign said. We sat at the bar from 9 p.m. until about 2.30 a.m. and had five pictures of Heineken, getting quite fist. Good fun. The band was great, called Old Tennis Shoes. They played good bluesy rock and roll, including old stones like Honky Tonk Women, Jumpin' Jack Flash, and the encore with Johnny B. Good. They sang all in English. In fact, there were more tourists in there than locals anyway, and we met three Canadians, several Americans, and one Rastafarian. The bartender liked us and gave us each a free beer. The place was well decorated in early Texas tackiness with framed photos of Geronimo and friends with a Texas flag on the wall. We sat at the bar and bar stools, but there were long tables and benches between us and the stage. The tables decorated with candles and wine bottles. New idea, eh? We were glad we'd wandered in there so early because soon the place was packed and everyone else was standing. I felt reminded of our nights in Texas bars. It was a good memory and a fresh take on it. Finally, we went home to our room and slept. Saturday's free breakfast of prosciutto, salami, cheese, white bread, boiled egg, jam, and tea wasn't bad, but made us a little queasy after all that beer, so we slept all afternoon. Got up at supper time and went for a stroll in the streets again. Had a snack and went to see a movie. They sure have a lot of ads before the feature starts here. Eventually came back and read tourist brochures in our room until 3 a.m. Today it's Sunday and we got up at 9, had breakfast again. We've decided to see museums today. Walked about halfway across town to a little area where three are close together. Saw first the Museum of Modern Art, then the Vincent Van Gogh Museum, which was really great. It has an awful lot of his original works. Then to the Rijksmuseum of Dutch painting from 16th to 19th century. Really great stuff by Rembrandt and all the lads, but too tired to inspect it all carefully, so we sort of skimmed through. Well, that brings you up to date on the week so far. I guess we should get out of this town soon. It's a little bit cold and rainy here, although there's still much greenness on grass and trees. We've seen some really neat old churches, the Royal Palace and the National Monument in the main square, which is always packed with throngs milling about, taxis zipping in trams rushing by, all as hellishly picturesque as you may well guess. Europe is off to an exciting start in my book, let me tell you. And by the way, this is the first chapter in my book, so please save this letter for me. Kisses and hugs, your tacky tourist friend. Bye for now.